my name is Ayana Glaze with Ayana Glaze Jewelry and today I am presenting to you a DIY jewelry making video on how to make a men's beaded bracelet and I'm doing this video today because Sunday is Father's Day and you know a lot of times fathers don't get a lot of fathers I know so they don't get much love you know they don't get good gifts so I thought it would be a good time to make this um, men's bracelet as a DIY video so to help some woman or some other guy who may want to give a friend of his or you know if you may want to give this your significant other or your dad a very cool gift something that was made by you that comes from the heart and it's a piece of jewelry that is very easy to make but it's very high on style plus men's beaded bracelets are on trend and that trend does not seem to be dying because men are really starting to really like the beaded bracelets and they can complement any type of look whether it's casual whether it's urban urban high style you know hip-hop those beaded bracelets are kind of hot right now especially on men and they look kind of look kind of sexy on them too so um that said let's get started with what we need so my glue fell on the ground <laughs> but the first thing you need is glue i choose to use the 527 multi-use uh glue and i like it because it's waterproof it's flexible um you want when you're doing making a stretch bracelet for a guy or a stretch bracelet for anyone you want the glue to be a fast drying flexible glue can use super glue the super glue will break it will pop but this flexible glue is going to dry it's going to be sturdy and your brace is going to last you also need some scissors because you got to cut your stretch cord and the stretch cord we're using is the stretch magic one millimeter size and i'm using the clear it comes in a lot of different colors black you know uh, comes in black red um, any fashion colors it comes in white but I prefer the clear because it works and it gives me more flexibility in my beaded bracelet designs. And also the sizing is important too because your hole in your bead may be bigger, it may be smaller. This one millimeter, most of the holes in my gemstone beads are one millimeter in size, but you can get this stretch cord in 0.5 millimeters. You can also get it in 1.5. You can even get it in two millimeters. It just depends on what you're making and the size that you need. You also need a beading board, and I'm using the Dares design board. I like this beading board very much because this board has numbers on it. Now, if you can see, these numbers are about one inch apart. So, and what that does, it keeps you from having to constantly stop and measure the bracelet to make sure it is going to be the size you need it to be. The board is going to tell you, you know, what size your beads are. Um, oh, and one more thing you're going to need. You're going to need some accent beads. I have some accent beads laid out here for the design that we're going to make today that I'm going to make to demo to you today. But I also have some other ones that I want to show you. So I have some rhinestone crystal beads. And again, they have a large hole. The good thing about your accent bead is that if you get the right size hole for the bead, then or for whatever accent you're using, what's going to happen is it's going to make a really good point for ending point for your bracelet so that you can hide the knot that you're going to place in the stretch cord and I have like a bunch of different I have like a bone bead here I have a um, coral one right here so they come in different sizes and different shapes and you just want to make and materials and you just want to make sure you pick something that's going to be manly and if you use something like a crystal accent that may be about the only accent that you want because once you start adding a lot of crystals what's going to end up happening is it's going to start looking girly and no guy wants to wear a girly looking bracelet probably the most important thing you're going to need are your beads here i have some lava rock some and two different types of tiger's eye lava i bought the lava rock because i want what i wanted to demonstrate to you is that you know, a lot of times when you pick beads, you could pick the wrong kind of bead for the particular guy. You want to pick the bead that is going to be most fitting to his style. So something like lava rock or a wood bead or um, some other, like a gemstone bead that has more of a matte finish to it would be great for a guy who just likes things to be more natural and raw looking. He doesn't like a lot of bling or what have you. Then this would be a good option for him. For a guy who likes a little bit more pizzazz, um, something like this glossier or polished tiger's eye 
or a polished onyx or a polished um, sandstone. That's also important, too, um, for that particular guy. He may like that. You know, that may be something that he can get. Even a guy that likes some things a little more casual and raw may like a bead like this as long as you pair it with the right accent. Like if you took this and this accent bead right here and put that with that, it won't be too overpowering. Whereas if you took um, this and this, <laughs> you know, then you're going to overpower the design because you got like a lot of bling going on, which is, you know, a lot of guys don't like heavy bling. It starts looking girly. So, again, I have tiger's eye. I have the golden tiger's eye. And then I also have a blue tiger's eye. Tiger's eye also comes in a red variety. I like this because, again, it's these these are still really masculine stones. The colors are very masculine colors, gold and black, brown brown striations within the golden tiger's eye. Then you have the blue, black, and gold striations, and the blue tiger's eye is perfect. This particular bracelet design we're going to make today is going to be made with the blue tiger's eye. I, you ready? So I have the blue tiger's eye already laid out on the board. Um, in the size that I plan on making for this bracelet, which happens to be an 8 inch men's bracelet. It actually goes a little bit longer than 8 inches because it goes from 0 to 4 on each side, but it actually goes from 0 to 4 and a half. So it's going to be about 9 inches. When you make a bracelet, if the guy's on wrist measures like 7 inches, set your beads up for about 8 inches. That way you'll get that inner diameter that you need for the wrist. And um, you will make sure you have the right size for his hand to go through the bracelet and also have a little hang. And, you know, you want to reduce the risk of breaking the bracelet. You don't want it too large, but you don't want it too small because you don't want to cut off your circulation. Um, you'll also see in it, so I have the blue tigers I laid out, and then I also have my accent beads. Here I'm using like an African Heshi bead, and then I'm also using two end caps. These end caps, these holes in these these beads here are large enough to hide the knot in the end, which is very important. You want an accent bead. Really, that'll help hide the knot. That's my technique. That's what I prefer. And if I don't have an accent bead that helps hide the knot, then I use end caps. And the end caps can also be used to add style and hide knots. If you don't have an accent bead, an end cap with a nice little design on it can actually turn a, a basic bead like this into an, a focal point on a bracelet. As long as you, you know, depending on how you like set it up. So let's get started with the design. So I already have this laid out to four and a half on each side, which measures out to be about nine inches. And I'm going to take these two round beads and I'm going to replace the two of these tiger's eye beads with that. So I'm going to go like right at one and a half, knock one of those out, come over here to right about one and a half, knock that one out. So I took the two tiger's eyes out and replaced it with those silver beads, which are about the same size as the tiger's eye beads. Next, I want to place my end caps. In this design, I'm going to use my end caps to hide the knot. So at one end, I'm going to take an end cap and I'm going to put it right in between the two beads on the end. Because what we want is for this to end up, these end caps to end up looking like this on this if i can get it to turn right oh there we go we, up, we want the um want it to end up looking like this there you go when it's laid out so you want these two end caps to close up the end and the end. okay of course i can't leave this end cap right here because i need to make sure i have it laid out right the end the one that's at the very end because I want to hide the knot in these, I'm going to remove one of the tiger's eye beads and I'm going to take this end cap and put it right here. So now I know, and this is how you're going to string your beads. For this design, I'm going to string my beads coming from right to left because I want this end cap to be the last bead that I put on. So that when I close, do the closing knot, the closing knot is hidden on the inside of this end cap. I've already cut a piece of stretch cord. And when you cut it, make sure you like give it a little stretch so you can kind of wake up the fibers in the stretch cord. And then also, I've already tied a knot, but it's a simple overhand knot that you just do like this. And if I can do it now, <laughs> just tie a simple overhand knot. You can do it like twice if you want. And that way you have like a stop for your bead when you put it, your first bead when you put it on. You don't have to worry about your bead sliding off the other end. So now I'm going to start stringing. So I'm 
gonna put on one of the, the tigers I beat on the end. And then I'm gonna put on the end cap. And remembering that I want this end cap to enclose this bead, I'm gonna put it on this way. So now when it goes on there, it's enclosing that bead right there. Like so. And then I'm just gonna tape and string the rest of my beads on. Like so, until I get to the end. Okay, so now I'm almost at the end. I have a few more beads to go. And once you start stringing them, it, it moves very quickly. It doesn't take long at all. You know, this video is very instructional. I want to give you some additional details. But once you know the basics, it's not going to take long at all. The longest thing is like setting up your design and picking your materials. Okay, so now I've strung the beads. As you can see, they're right about where we said they would be. And I've laid it laid out the cord. And here's the here's the ending end cap right here. Because I want this end cap to enclose this one, to enclose this bead on the other end, the way I'm gonna put it on is the opposite of the way I put the other one on. So I'm gonna put this where the top is touching this bead. So it looks something like so. All right, so now I'm ready to tie my knot. I'm gonna let this hang a little bit so I got room to tie my knot. You see the knot that was the stop knot right there? So now I'm gonna do just a basic overhand knot again. Well, I'm gonna do like a tie, like almost like I'm tying my shoes, but I'm not gonna put a loop in there. So now you see the beads have come together on the end and between the end caps, right? So I'm gonna tie again, like so put a knot in there and you can see the knot right there and I'm going to tie one more time because I kind of like it. I'm, I'm paranoid about my bracelets even though I've never had them break on me but I like to just you know be extra careful I'm going to tie one more slip knot like like so and then I'm going to take my glue my 527 glue and be careful, you don't need much of this glue and if you slightly squeeze, it's gonna see it's already started coming out a little bit. So right on that knot, I'm gonna put a little bit of the glue. And it's okay if some gets on the stone because you can always wipe that off before it dries. So I've got the glue on there. And I'm gonna let it close a little bit, just like that. And notice you still have these two ends right here. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go back and just kind of pull that back a little bit. Being careful to avoid the knot, I'm going to cut the string as close as possible to the knot. I'm leaving a little bit of room. So now I've cut it off. Now you can't see where the knot is. So now you have a beaded bracelet. I'm going to take it and put it in the box. So I have my handy gift box right here. And you can take your bracelet and just sit it in the box. See how nice of design that is? You have it where you have your little piece of splash right there. And you have your two silver pieces in here for a little bit more splash. But it's a very nice bracelet. And it's a manly bracelet. You know, a girl may want to wear this too if she likes unisex jewelry, but this is something that's definitely, the color and design and the style is definitely suitable for a guy. One thing I suggest is that you get one of these Ziploc bags and, and put your bracelet in that bag before putting it in your box. And the reason I say that is because a lot of times men don't have a place to store jewelry. Or if they've never worn jewelry, they may not have a place to store jewelry. So if you give them a little Ziploc bag, they can put their bracelet in. Just drop it in like so. That's just showing a little extra care. And they can sit it inside. You can sit it in this way. Or you can like have the brace, have the bag underneath the bracelet. Like so. You can sit it in a gift box. Close the box. And there you have your men's beaded bracelet. Thank you for watching. 
Um, supplies, details, and instructions will be in the box below.